Okay, then it is 41, so I'm starting the session. So my name is Buru Aydar, and I'm working as part of the field engineering team uh, at Canonical. Today, I'm going to provide you a kind of a recipe about how to build a real-time Linux kernel for Ubuntu Core. Well, you know, most of the people are aware of the classic Ubuntu, which is either Ubuntu desktop or the server. Uh, however, Ubuntu Core is not very well known. So I thought that it, it worth mentioning about the core and the ecosystem that we built around it. And then I'm going to talk very briefly about the real-time Linux kernel. And finally, I will provide you the recipe to build your own uh, real-time Linux kernel snap that could work on Ubuntu Core. So one of the main purpose of the Ubuntu Core is to address the uh, challenges of the embedded Linux-based systems. So if you are going to talk with some people who are in this domain, uh, they will complain about you, uh, the security maintenance. They will complain about uh, about the troubles that they have in terms of updatability and robustness of their system. And finally, most of them, most of them will tell you that they are trying to, you know, kind of create a kind of common Linux distro that they can use across different products. So with Ubuntu Core, we try to address all of these points, and I believe that we are doing more than that because we are also trying to bring mobile-like development infrastructure to the embedded domain. Uh, so what is Ubuntu Core? Uh, Ubuntu Core is created by using the same bits of the Ubuntu Classic, but it is just a minimal version of it since we target the embedded domain here. The main difference between the Classic and Core is that Core is completely consists of snaps, uh, and snap is basically a new packaging format with integrated containerization and the over-the-air updates mechanisms. Uh, and all, all SNAPs applications basically deliver their own dependency as well. And those, you know, basically this allow us to have a transactional updates between different SNAP revisions. Uh, you know, when you look at a kind of basic Ubuntu core system, it consists of uh, a, kernel a kernel SNAP, which is, as the name implies, it is the kernel. And then we have the gadget SNAP, uh, it is actually, you know, the boot assets. If it's an ARM-based system, it is the U-boot. And, and if it's a kind of x86 based system, it is the grub in general. And then we have the core snap, which is the root file system of the Ubuntu core itself. And then we have the snapd snap, which is a daemon that controls all of the snaps uh, within your Ubuntu core system. And snaps are running on their own bubble. So they are confined. Uh, and you know we, you have to define some interfaces to be able to communicate with some hardware resources and also uh, software middlewares like, for instance, Dbus. We also have a Snap Store, which is a kind of marketplace for your snaps, and it also provides you the over-air over-the-air update mechanism for the devices. So basically, your your devices registers to to Snap Store and download some snaps and install them. And then uh, if you are the publisher of a certain snap, and if you, you know, kind of uh, create a new version of it, and if you upload it to the store, since devices already installed it, devices will pull it and will be updated. That's basically how it works. And finally, I just would like to mention about some, some platform features of the Ubuntu Core. So Ubuntu Core basically promises 10 years of uh, CV security fixes and, uh, and Every two years, there will be a new Ubuntu Core version. Currently, you know, there is a kind of Ubuntu Core 20, but in April, we will release the uh, Ubuntu Core 22. And we also we also provide a, a, a tool that is called Snapcraft that allows you to, to build your snaps. So now the real deal. Well, to be honest, I, I, I just don't want to, you know, kind of dive in uh, to the details of the real-time Linux kernel because it is mainly a very huge and advanced topic and we have very limited time here. However, I just would like to mention about a concept which is quite important called latency. And latency is defined as the time between a task is invoked and executed. Uh, you know, there's also a kind of concept of the low latency kernel, uh, which is also provided as part of the mainline kernel. So it is quite easy to, to enable it. Technically, what it does is it increases the CPU frequency that results with more responsiveness. You know, generally speaking, uh, there are great use cases where low latency kernel will fit for your requirements. Uh, for instance, you can use it with uh, audio transmissions and so on. 
Uh, however, it still cannot guarantee the determinism. So then, what is the real time? You know, what is the real time kernel provides? So basically, it is not about the performance. It is not about the uh, fast execution time. It is generally about the determinism. So basically, it provides you a deterministic latency so that you can be sure that certain activities will, you know, kind of run in this period of time. Well, you know, it has lots of different uh, use cases and uh, areas that you can use the real-time kernel. Uh, you know, it can be used in robotics to, to for the flight controller, for instance, or you can use it for some industrial automation, com uh, in industrial automation communication protocols like Profinet, Etherkit, and so on. So let's say you need to build your own real-time uh, patched Linux kernel for the Ubuntu core. What you need to do? Well, firstly, I have to state that Ubuntu is not using the mainline kernel as it is. What we do is that basically we are forking the mainline Linux kernel and apply some additional security patches and improve the performance and also customizing the kernel a little bit according to our platform requirements. Uh, in the meantime, when you look at the preempt RT patch deliveries, they are generally valid uh, for the mainline Linux kernel versions. So this is where we start to struggle a little bit because Ubuntu is uh, applying some additional patches and improves the stability, improves the, or customize it for the platform requirements. And in the meantime, preempt RT patch is generally valid for the mainline Linux kernel and there could be some collisions between them. So how you are going to understand which kernel version that you need to use and which preempt RT patch that you need to use. So, you know, the, the first thing that you have to figure out is that which Ubuntu kernel you want to use and what is the mainline version of it. Uh, one of my colleagues, you know, kind of uh, provided this kernel version mapping in the links below, which is in the people.canonical.com. So you can, you can figure it out. Uh, what is the Ubuntu kernel version and what is the mainline Linux version that is forked from? And according to that, you also need to find the related preempt RT patch as well. And if you are okay with the versioning, then you know the rest is just you know building the kernel itself. So this is the most important and most challenging part. So I mean, since uh, this is the Ubuntu core system, everything is snap. And therefore, you also even have to, you know, kind of provide your kernel, Linux kernel, as a snap. And this is generally done with Snapcraft YAML file. So it is the main entry point to create your snaps. Uh, and after that, we are using a CLI tool that is called Snapcraft. So Snapcraft tool is parsing the Snapcraft YAML file and uh, do some additional actions in order to create the final snap. So basically, as you can see, it is it is just a YAML file and it defines how you are going to build the source code. So it starts with some metadata section where you define the name of your snap, summary, description, etc. And then you define the part section, which is actually the source code of your application. So in addition to that, Snapcraft also provides a plugin mechanism, which is used to ease the build and it allows it also, according to your plugin configuration, it also allows you some additional configuration parameters. For instance, in this example, uh, we have to use a kernel plugin. Uh, and kernel plugin has lots of different configuration. For instance, it provides me, you know, the K config flavor so that I can provide the dev config that I'm going to use. And in addition to that, I can uh, add some additional configuration by using the K configs here. So for instance, in that case, I enabled the prompt RT patch uh, so that I can you know, kind of uh, build my Linux kernel. So in, it, in addition to that, you also have to provide the source where the Snapcraft tool will going to fetch the source code. So in, in that case, it, this is my repository. And I am stating that this is a Git repository. And finally, I'm saying that, hey, I want this kernel. I want the, I want, uh, I want the kernel repository in this in this tag so that I'm going to have the Ubuntu 5.4.0 and uh, and this version basically. Well, you know, this is one of the most advanced Snapcraft YAML file that probably you are going to see. Uh, well, for instance, I'm, I'm even trying to, you know, cust customize the build steps here uh, for different reasons. So you would like to customize the build steps. For instance, let's say you want to apply a patch 
or maybe you would like to move some source directory from one source code from one directory to other one. So here, for instance, I use the uh, power uh, override pull mechanism. So here I'm saying that just pull the code uh, as usual. And then I am running my own custom commands. Like here, I'm, I'm just printing some, some messages like applying the real time patch. And then I'm, I'm, I'm applying the patch with the patch hyphen p1 command. So, I mean, once you are happy and once you are done with your Snapcraft YAML file, the only thing is just building the Snap by using the Snapcraft tool. So, there are different ways of building your Snap. Uh, so one of them is, you know, you can build it in your host system. You can just use the Snapcraft dash dash this destructive mode. However, this is not the best practice because at the end it pollutes your own host system. So generally, the recommended way of uh, creating Snap is basically using the containers. So let's assume that you you use the containers, you you build your kernel Snap. Then what what is the next step? So you know. Uh, you have to create your own custom Ubuntu core image because you created your own uh, kernel snap and now you have to create your own Ubuntu core image. There are lots of tutorials about how to do that. It is it is super easy. I mean, it's not like Yocto or something like that. It takes roughly around five minutes. Uh, and in the meantime, if you are looking for more detailed step-by-step -step instruction about what I am explaining here, I created a post and all of the source code is also available in my uh, in my blog. So feel free to you know kind of uh, read it and apply it. So that was all. If there are any questions, I, I'm I'm really happy to answer them. Okay. How can I use a vendor kernel with the Snapcraft? Can you suggest an example? Of course. I mean you can use different uh, vendor kernels as well. Uh, basically, you can take uh, my repository as a reference where I built the kernel for the for the x86 based system, but the steps are you know kind of very similar with another vendor's kernels as well. Okay, is there any other questions? So there's a question about where are snaps built? Well, I mean, uh, to be honest, this is, uh, I didn't really understand what is the intention about this question. So snaps can be built in your uh, host system, or you can build your snap in, in a kind of container as well, or you can even build your snaps uh, in, in the virtual machines. So it is totally up to you. However, as best practices, what we recommend is, you know, kind of uh, just launch a container and build your snap over there so that you are not polluting your own host system. So are standard kernel drivers directly supported with the real-time patch? This is a great question. So, you know, this is a kind of recipe to, to help you to get started uh, doing your own uh, real-time patched kernel version. However, personally, I cannot guarantee that it needs to be tested. Uh, however, in the future, Canonical is going to, at least it is planning to, you know, we are planning to provide a real-time uh, patch kernel as well. Uh, probably it could be delivered in April uh, 2022, but yeah, we will see it. So does using real-time kernel affect or limit any other standard Ubuntu tools, security updates, software updates, or the system management tool? So this is a great question as well. So the thing is that, you know, uh, Ubuntu Core is a kind of managed embedded Linux distro or the IoT distro. So if you are, you know, basically, building your own Linux uh, Linux kernel, then it is under your responsibility to maintain this. So generally speaking, uh, you know, at the moment, uh, as of Canonical, we don't provide the real-time patched Linux kernel. However, as I said before, you know, uh, in April uh, 2012, 2000, 
22, we are planning to release a you know, kind of real-time patched version of it, and then it will be managed kernel so that the canonical will handle the maintenance and so on. Well, uh, so, I mean, this is a, a bit uh, tough topic. Uh, the question is, is cross-compilation supported? It is supported under a kind of experimental flag that is available with the Snapcraft. However, from the development perspective, we still don't really suggest to use it for the production images. So, uh, I mean, it is possible, but at the moment, the answer is no. So the question is that, is there any infrastructure to create, manage, deploy custom snaps to put onto the deployed embedded devices? So yes, I mean, basically you can always use the global uh, global store, which is under snapcraft.io. However, if you, you know, if you, if you are doing some serious business and if you don't want others to see your own snaps, then we also provide a kind of private snap store as well. Uh, this is how you could do that. Okay, so I guess this is the end of the presentation. So thanks everybody. And if you have some additional questions, feel free to, you know, kind of visit or uh, boot. Thanks. Bye.